Thank you, Nelly, for putting this event together. Today. This class is also Lunishmat Yerachmil Ben Gedalia. All right, guys. Today is a very, very tonight actually is a very, very powerful night. Tonight is the 25th of Elul, starting at about eight o'clock. That means it's the creation of the world. 25th of Elul represents the creation when the world was born. On Rosh Hashanah is when man and man was born. So you're you're tapping into new energy. And definitely, definitely one of the things with dating is, is constantly renewal, constantly renewal. Sometimes it's very easy to get knocked out by the dating scene and, and, and the letdowns and the pushbacks and, and the bad relationships. It, it's, it could definitely get to you. It could burn you out. I feel the pain. I hear the phone calls. But it's really how you handle the pushback. And I can't tell you my life has been one big pushback just pushing back. So that's, that's where I want to get you guys to understand that the value of the pushback, the value of desire. So tonight, tonight is the 25th of Elul, and it's a, it's a very powerful night to tap into this, to tap into this energy of renewal. So just, just that itself, you could say, hey, the world was created, I could definitely change my mind and have an open mind. I mean, you're, you're tapping into new energy. And by the way, if you just just on the, end, the other side of marriage, everything's about new energy. Everything's about new energy. Resentment, lack of new energy. So we're all, we always have to practice new energy. So it's extremely important to understand that. The reason why I actually did this event also, obviously time is very, I'm, I'm going out of town in a couple of days, I have a million things to do. But I said, you know what? It's Rosh Hashanah, and Rosh Hashanah happens to be the first night, the first day of Rosh Hashanah, is when any, any couple that met that year was created on Rosh Hashanah. It's a very powerful concept. That means the first day, if the woman, according to the Arizo, the two days of Rosh, Rosh Hashanah represents all zivugim. The first day of Rosh Hashanah is when man, woman, approached, found a guy. The second night was when a man found a woman. So you're tapping into also six days, five, six days, you know, you, your whole year is, is there. It's declared on Rosh Hashanah itself. So how, what better way to prepare yourself in a mindset than just showing up and doing the same thing over and over? And at the end of the day, you cannot take failure personal. Failure is to teach you to change your perspective or your procedure. That's the bottom line. That means if you're dating people, you're attracting the wrong one, things are not going through, change your procedure or change your perspective. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different things, obviously it's not working. It's not working. So it's extremely important that we change procedure or we change perspective. Extremely important to understand that. So you think about an area where you could make space for a new reality in your life. Because remember, once we make space, that person will come into our lives. You know, I had a friend of mine, she was working, she had a very, very heavy workload, and she's like, listen, I want to meet somebody, but I'm, look, I said, what are your hours? I come home every night at 9 o'clock. I said, you'll never meet somebody until you make, you, come, you start coming home at 5 o'clock, and you make space for that person. Otherwise, there's no, nothing to talk about. Don't even date. So that's another area of our life. Our life. We have to ask ourselves, are we making enough space? Can somebody come into our relationship? Do we have that space created? Or are we so focused on what we want that there is no space? Anything in life, you need space. That means you need to empty yourself out. We need to humble up and create space. Marriage is all about creating space. That means recognizing that our ego is always telling us it should be this way. No, our ego blocks our perspective. So what we need to do is constantly create space. So on Rosh Hashanah, you want to really, really be, the most important thing to work on Rosh Hashanah is purity of thought. Is to make sure, this is why we've been talking about the whole Elul, working our, our subduing our imagination. Working on our imagination at the worst thing we show up on Rosh Hashanah, we look around, who's in the room, and we start getting nervous. Oh, another year goes by. That's not what you want on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, you want to already feel you want to be so careful to think positively because you, you're actually getting, you're getting, you're getting judged on your thoughts on Rosh Hashanah. You're getting judged on your thoughts. 
So think about how present you could be. Think about what you want to focus on. It's definitely not a time to worry. It's not a time to, 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 to have any fear. It's definitely a time to be extremely positive. And you can be positive just because positivity is faith. Anybody who tells you, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be positive, that means they have faith in their life. There's no rationality to it. It's just constant, constant, constant being able to think greater than your circumstances. I had a class in Deal, and again, the, the problem is not the people. The problem is the, is the catastrophe. Is the, is the catastrophe, is the fear. Is the fear that's running by. And when you show up with that kind of fear, it affects people feel that energy. This is why it's extremely important. Another thing we spoke about these days of Elul is turning our catastrophe into manifestation. If I asked you today, can you manifest your partner? Can you tell me where you're going to get married? Have you, can you tell me the hotel you're going to get married at? Can you tell me the spot? Yes or no? Can anybody tell me? Okay, so that's a problem here. What do we have, 80 people here? Maybe you, you come to my classes every day. So you have one out of 79 per people that have not even thought about that. Think about that. Think about, think about what a problem that is. Imagine if I would go to a high school football team or an NFL or a college basketball team or, or college football and, and ask them, where do you picture, what kind of helmet would you want to be? They'll tell you, I want to be in a Dolphins helmet. I want to be in a Raiders helmet. I want to be in this helmet. I don't know. I never thought about it. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's, that's a problem in general. I'm sure in other areas of your life you have used imagination and worked for you. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, no, yes, yes. Okay, so why, why, are, we not, why are we not doing it in here? Why are we not using this? Why are, we not, why are we not believing this? Remember, Egypt happened. The problem in Egypt, they couldn't think outside of their emotions. They couldn't get out of their head. They had no breath, they had no vitality. And that is extremely important. You have to, it doesn't matter if you're Persian, Moroccan, Ishkanah, I couldn't care less where you are. You're still not, you're still not out. You're, you're still in exile. When I can't see the end product, I'm in exile. I'm mentally in exile. That means I have a, in Kabbalah we speak about, it's called constricted consciousness. Are we in expansive consciousness or are we in constricted consciousness? So I, you have to ask yourself that question. You have to ask yourself. It's six days from Hello, six days from Rosh Hashanah, and nobody in the room could tell me, hey, what hotel am I going to get married at? Where's the dreaming? Where's the, where's the childlike imagination that, we, that went lost? Where's the Cinderella? We, we, we forgot. Oh, it's gone. It's all gone. Why is it gone? A few bad dates, a few bad engagements, a little food poisoning here and there, a little trauma. Yes or no? Yes or no? It's, not, it's there for a reason. So you're practically telling me you're, you're stuck in the past and you want a better reality. Think about, think about think, just common sense. Forget Judaism, religion, and everything else. Just common sense. I can't tell you, I don't even know what hotel I'm going to get married. I don't even know. You, have to, you can't hit a target that's not there. You cannot hit. And the problem with this concept is, is when you, when you don't have targets in life, spiritual targets, that means you have a very, very low, low idea of what your creator could do for you. You're looking at your creator as a stingy matchmaker, not as an abundant father that wants to give you. And that, that's something we need to work on. That's something we need to work on. So you have to understand what these relationships did. They, these relationships left you in the past. They left you scarred. And I could tell you I was divorced and I got remarried. Extremely fast. Because I had Rabbi Nachman in my life. I had prayer in my life. So I'm, I was able to go, move through it. But when we don't have that, what do we have? What do we have, guys? Think about it. Just think about that concept. I'm sure you have business visions where you want to be. You have to understand something. There is a, your creator wants you to win. 
He wants you to win. You have, do you believe that or not? Do you believe he really wants you to win? This is why the shadow is the greatest teacher in life. You, our shadows are the greatest teacher. Do you, think, do you think my creator wants me to have marital peace? Of course he wants me to have marital peace. Everything that we want below, if we have a desire, it's also a desire in heaven. But the problem is we're not checking in. We're not checking in. We're, 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 you know what we're doing? You, have, you can live a life of divine supervision, but you decide, I don't know about this divine supervision. Let me just date. You're stuck to the odds of the world, which is 60% divorce. You, you, these odds suck. These odds suck. The whole purpose of being connected to God and to have spirituality and to have Shabbat and, and Nida and all these things is because you, you're not stuck to the odds. You're above the odds. Who, who wants to be in these odds, by the way? Think about it. These odds are horrific. Let me ask you a question. If we know now the statistics are 70% of women are calling divorces now, right? It's a big deal. 70% of the women are calling to divorces now. But if you don't have any forgiveness like the Torah teaches you, if you don't have giving the benefit of the doubt, if you don't have the areas where our, pay, our mothers prayed for their husbands, what do you do? Oh, he provided for me five years ago, now he's not providing. Time to get out, of it. time to get rid of him. All you have is, you have nothing but statistics. That's all you have. And this is what we have, a ter we have, a, we have, a, we have a system that's, that, looks, that looks the way it does. So it's not that the way it works in heaven is, for example, if you trust in him and you rely on him, he gives you divine supervision. But if you don't, he leaves you up to nature. Doesn't mean he punishes you, God forbid. There's no punishment. He just leaves you to the odds of the world. He leaves you to the odds of the world. And now I don't know what that looks like. What does that look like? Not too good. Not too good, because you're going to get what you've always gotten. So if it works out, wonderful. But you know, you know, there's no special help in heaven. And we know we need special help in heaven. So that's the, that's the whole point of these classes. It's not, I don't want to keep you guys to the odds of the world. I don't want to give you the odds of the, the typical three-month LA relationship, the Miami ghosting after two weeks. Yeah, I'm trying to prevent you from that horror film that's happening. Do you understand? I'm trying to tell you, listen. Connect to God. What are, you, what, are you, what are you doing with all these guys? These guys? Nobody's serious because they're not serious in heaven. That's all I'm telling you. I'm not pushing you anything on you. I'm just telling you, what, what, do you, what do you want at the end of the day? So the reason why I'm connected, I'm connected to these teachings, I'm, is because I don't want to be stuck with the odds of the world, which is nothing but despair, worry, three-month relationship, stuck in trauma. That's what you get. And that's what you get. That's all you get is this. Hot starts, cold ends, cute Instagram videos telling somebody, don't be in toxic relationship, blah, 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 blah. But who's closing deals? Who's closing deals? Nobody's closing deals. Everybody just talking about what happened, why they blew the deal. Who's closing deals? I want to close deals. You know, it's like the guy in the story tells you, oh, wow, you wouldn't believe what a busy day we had. What a busy day we had in the store. The, the owner of the store could not care how many customers went in. Okay, how much did you sell? Who cares how many people came in? What did you sell? So I am into the conversion business. And I'm trying to do what I can to get people to convert. And you, in order to convert, you need something higher than yourself. It's not... Life on life's terms and, and relationships the way they are today, I... I I can't give you any sigulots, but you need to be very lucky, etc. And forget getting married, staying married. That's a whole different ballgame. You understand? That's a whole, that's a whole, I think it's very easy to find somebody. To, to keep somebody, to stay married, to stand in love, that's a whole, that's a marathon. That's a marathon. So that's why I'm trying, that's the point of my whole point of my classes, is to explain to you there's another world beyond this world where you can think positively, and you can be hopeful, and you don't have to be stuck in the past. But if we, th we think about it very clearly, if we, we're, we're always thinking that if we went through trauma, 
Well, it's going to happen again. Unless we work through that stuff. And we, this is not being taught to you in, 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 in synagogues. It's not being taught to you. This is why we need the, the, the connection of the, of, of the Baal Shem Tov and, and, and Rab Nachman. Because they really get us out of our heads. You're not going to get this in a traditional Seder. You're not going to get this stuff. Um, the difference between therapy and spirituality, therapy identifies the issue. But spirituality gets you over the issue, gets you above, gets you to the next level. Because it's not about understanding everything. Okay, tell me what I'm doing wrong, but then I need to overcome it. I don't need to understand it. I just need to pinpoint the issue. I don't need to, I don't need to, to rationalize it. And this is extremely, extremely important to understand that. So just think about Rosh Hashanah. Think about maybe start practicing. Start practicing. Put something out there. I would love to get married in this synagogue, in this hotel. Don't even have a picture of the person. Just picture yourself out of being single, thinking about being single forever. Picture yourself out of saying another bad date. Get, get out of that Get out of that zone. Get out of that. Get your head out of that. Because what happens is, is the, the, the loneliness that comes and the despair when we do hit those states. It's not real tears. Those are tears from sadness. Those are tears from... It's not coming from... It's not a broken heart. It's tears of despair. What we do need to work is we need to change the tears of despair into a broken heart into asking our Creator, what do you want us to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to change? I'm open for everything. And when you start recognizing that the, when you go from despair to a broken heart, it takes on a whole different level. You'll, you'll get a relief, you'll get the change that you want to get. And this is where, at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, you know, what is, what insecurity, what is my number one insecurity? And, and, it, and why is, what am I doing to work on it? You know, the Torah tells us there is the most common verse in the Torah is do not fear. Over and over the Torah tells us a thousand times, do not fear. What is fear? An insecurity. An insecurity. So you have to ask yourself, what insecurities do we have that we're bringing in? We want to go from a buyer, instead of a seller, we want to go to a buyer. Buyer's calm, buyer's not desperate. It's because when we, sh when we show up with desperation, people don't commit to desperate people. They commit to confident people. Not to desperation. So fear makes you desperate. It makes you, makes you make a mistake. So think about that concept. What is the insecurity that you're working on? What is the number one insecurity that keeps on showing up? For guys, it could be a money insecurity. Okay? Our sages tell us that wealth comes in the account of the guy's wife. If you honor your wife, the wealth comes through her. It doesn't come from your girlfriend. It comes from your wife. Our sages tell us that when you get married, all your sins are erased. Because that's how difficult it is. That's how difficult it is. But when you walk around with insecurity, and I've said this many times, it's, it's okay to recognize there's going to be differences. And this is where the real, the real definition of a soulmate is not a perfect glove. It's really somebody that's going to break your walls. Who's going to get the best out of you? We're thinking, I need a perfect glove. That's, what do you need a perfect glove for? That's like saying, bring me a dental kit in a hotel. What do you, of course, you're gonna, it's, it's free. You need somebody to break your walls. When you're growing, that means you're, you're with, with the right person. Did that person make you better? And I always ask people, I know you're having a tough time with a specific person, but is that person bringing you closer to God? Is that person making you stronger? The answer is yes. It is your 100% your soulmate. But when a person is just codependent and tells you exactly what you want to hear, that's a glove. That's not going to last. 
So it's okay to have resistance. The person should bring out the greatest out of you. So sometimes we think, this person is so different than me. Yeah, normal. <laughs> and that's, that's normal. That's normal. But I just, I just want you to completely think. And I've said this again. People will change regardless. Who you will marry will change. So if you're so worried about the certainty of they're going to be like this, how, would, how will I know if I will be happy? You won't even know who you are in, 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 in two years. You'll be a different person. And they'll be a different person. Do you understand? We're buying into a system that's not even a system that's even reality. So all the, 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 all the fear of making a decision and all the, the procrastination, waiting for the perfect thing, and waiting for the feelings, and waiting, it's just wasting your time. It's wasting your time. The person has to be kind, they have to have good midot, they have to be growth oriented, they have to have self-control. But the rest of it, this is why it's extremely important that when you change your relationship with your creator, he'll change your relationship with people. So as you become better, as you become more merciful with your creator and more forgiving and more grateful, of course your marriage is going to get better. You understand? If you're showing up with expectations, imagine you're dating and you have this long list of expectations. Usually women have 40 things on the list, men have three things on the list. <laughs> now, when you have these 40 things on the list, okay, what are the odds you're gonna get them all? And the guy's single, okay, zero. So right away you're putting yourself in resentment. You're putting yourself in a face. You have no chance of winning. You should be is, you should focus on, instead of expectations, you should see how, many, how much appreciation you saw that guy, how many good qualities you saw in the guy. Instead of what is he getting for you, what is he doing for you, how many good things did you see in him? Because that, that is called gratitude. When you're grateful, you see the good in your partner. But when you come with all these lists, you're not going to get them. And sometimes we have these lists based on Hollywood, based on what our mothers told us. The biggest blessings don't come before marriage, they come after marriage. They don't even come before, they come after. So the, 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 it's a, there's a very dysfunctional dating situation going on right now. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> it's very dysfunctional, the system sucks. The information out there is not good. Because the information out there is teaching you if that person doesn't love you, respect you, it's not for you. It's, it's just, it's not made for any kind of error. Do you understand? It's too, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. It's not realistic. And of course, the person telling you they're single themselves. Of course. So I'm just trying to explain to you, not, it's not realistic. It's not a realistic advice. Do you understand? Where Rabbi Arush would tell you, pray for it, the psychi psychologist would tell you, get a divorce. You understand? That's the difference. The rabbis tell you that if you see something wrong in the person, it's because you have a little bit in yourself. And that person is just showing you. Remember, what is the goal of all of this? The goal of the, all of this is to become close to perfected as possible. Why? Not perfection. Close to perfected is in growth. The reason why is the more we become godlike in our lives, the more we are able to give. Correct? The more I become godlike, the more I can now become a giver. And obviously, the reward for growth is what? Giving and then purpose, fulfillment. But the more I, I become a taker, I, don't, I do not become a godlike. God -like. I become ego-driven, and I'm only setting myself up for anger, disappointment, expectations, and etc. And then who do I blame? I blame God for not finding me a soulmate. So it's extremely important to understand that. For women, they have to work specifically on honor. It's their, it's, it's their toughest thing to work on. Is their honor? Is their honor? And for men, obviously, they have to work on their self-control. 
their self-control with their eyes and all that. That is, we all have a different test. The men's biggest test is that. The problem is with when men start viewing things inappropriate things and they get involved with girls that they would never, mar never marry, they are no longer givers anymore. They are now takers. You get me? So as long as I'm a taker, I can't be happy. Because I'm a taker. I got pleasure when you're supposed to be the giver. So when that happens, you start losing your, mascul your, 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 your masculinity. And then when you, the real woman shows up, you're afraid to deal with her. So it, it makes us weak when we become just takers. So every time you're going out with uh, the Christinas or this, when you have no intentions of getting married, and you think, well, I'm just going to wait for the nice girl to show up, the Jewish girl to show up, and then the Jewish girl shows up and she gives you a nice uh, a hit in the head, and you're like, well, wh wh why don't I just go back to her? It's because the way it works is the following. Your single life, there is a lot of residual damage that happens. Let's be honest. So you need a cleansing. So Hashem, bring, he, Hashem give, will give you a wife to help you with that process. She cleanses you. Again, in order for the sake of betterment. But when you go for what's easy, all you get is shame. You get shame after it. So when men are watching these things and doing inappropriate things, they become takers. And they become takers, they can't become givers, and that's a, that's a disaster. Because Parnassa, wealth comes from taking responsibility. God gives you wealth because you can now give it to others. But when you are a receiver, he, there's, he'll, he'll cut, they cut the pipelines of wealth for a person. So spiritually, this is why when we sign the contract, when we sign the ketubah, it says, I am going to provide for my wife, I'm going to be responsible, I'm going to take care of her. You're taking on major responsibility. And because you took on responsibility, then what happens? Then God gives you the, the wealth to provide. That make sense? But when you say, I don't want to take responsibility, I want what's easy, no problem, you can have what's easy, but I'm going to cut the wealth off. I'm going to cut the wealth off. Your parnasa will be, you're barely, you'll struggle tremendously financially because now you're not, you're not providing. So what do you need from heaven? So you can go on more vacations? You understand? So this is why when you take responsibility, wealth, kids, come. When you do the right thing, good things come to you. But when you do the wrong thing, you're in the reverse role. You're in the reverse role. And that brings tremendous destruction in the world. And that's actually the problem of Adam and Eve. Adam should have influenced Eve. Correct? Instead, Eve influenced him. And that's the problem. The whole world went into chaos. Went into chaos. So that's the and if you go back to 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 the basics, every relationship is the following: the men become weaker, the women have to become stronger. They have more of a masculine role. The 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 male stop gives up responsibility. He develops a feminine role, and there you go. Your seventy percent divorces. So when men do not do what they need to do, grow spiritually, take on responsibility, have self-control, look for responsibility. Then what happens is, is everything gets screwed up. Everything gets screwed up. And that's something that we, have, we need to understand. So this is why a good wife will help you get the trophy. If you just go for the trophy wife, I don't know what you're going to get. But you need a wife to help you grow and become the best version that you are supposed to be. And that is not a glove. That is somebody willing to break your walls. Of course, she has to have, she has to be connected spiritually. But a lot of guys don't want that responsibility because it's, it's too much growth. But that, at the end of the day, that really, really comes from heaven. And this is why the Zohar tells us that women really are reincarnated only for the guys. Believe it or not. According to the Zohar, women come to help the guy. Either she helps you, she makes you, or she breaks you. <laughs> According to who you are. So there's a lot of responsibility on the guys. Now the women have to understand also 
And this is, I'm giving you because there, there's going to be ups and downs in any relationship. So let's say you did have a great, hus a great person you were dating for five years, four years, he provided for you, and he's having some hard times now. You can't say, oh, he's not responsible, he's lazy, he's a bum. Forget it, and forget the five good years. And that's what's happening today. You see, guys have provided forever, and they had two bad years, next thing you know, I don't want you anymore. How about the five years that you provided? <laughs> How about all the good? So you failed to have gratitude for the five years. Because right at what happens? Now, all of a sudden, there's a, there's a couple, he's going through a tough time. That's when you have to become the, the, the cheerleader and cheer him up and says, remember who you used to be. This is not who you are. I remember you not put him down and bash him and tell him he's not making enough money and, you're, and look at your neighbor's building house and you're not building, you can't even build a bathroom. And that's her problem. Her ego, instead of building him up, she's smashing him and, and breaking him to pieces. That's kavod. So everybody has ups and downs. We have to pick each other up. But if that person doesn't remember all the good, and all they think is, is focusing on the bad, then that person will have no chance to win. He'll check out of the marriage. So uh, what, what the whole point of this is to get you into an appreciation mindset. Whatever you appreciate in your, in your, in your, in your spouse, appreciate. Remember that concept. Whatever you appreciate, appreciate. Can you appreciate? Can I see the appreciation? And this is where you see studies showing that couples that made it were that they were able to see 80% good and 20% not so good. That's okay. But when they see 20% good, 80% not good, it's a recipe for disaster. And the reason we are judging like that in the first place is because that's the way we're judging ourselves. You understand? That's the way we feel about ourselves. Because if, if you are feeling good about yourself, you treat people better. If you don't feel good about yourself, you will treat people the way you feel about yourself. And this is a problem. This is a problem, because we're absorbing everybody else's negativity. This is why, at the end of the day, you can't get stuck in trauma too long. And I own addiction centers. The reason why you can't get stuck is because hurt people hurt others. It's not even about you. That person hurt you, it wasn't even about you. It was he wasn't able to give, or it, it, it got really good and he was afraid of keeping it, and he had some fear of sabotage and he ruined the relationship. But don't punish yourself by not getting into a new relationship because of what somebody hurt did to you. Does that make sense? And that's, that's what's happening a lot. We're always making it about us. That's kavod, honor. That's woman, oh, I got insulted. Look what he did to me. No, he didn't do it to you. He did it to himself. He did it to himself. He didn't do it to you. So you have to become humble by not thinking less of yourself, thinking of yourself less. Because if the guy was doing really good and he was in the right mindset, he would have committed to you, he would have he done the right thing, and he would have succeeded. But the fact that he couldn't handle the vessel he, he, the vessel broke. And, and don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourselves, because now you're creating a dysfunctional, fictional story that I'm not good enough and I don't deserve this because of that relationship in that. It's not true. It's not true. So it's not about you. Sometimes it's about the person. And, but when we're not in a good state, oh, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. And, and you shouldn't do that to yourself. You're just, you're punishing yourselves for no reason. And then, God forbid, not only do you, are you punishing yourself, then you have a very dysfunctional view of your creator. <laughs> How many people have this happened? A, a girl got cheated on. A guy without spirituality is as good as his options. Bottom line. So if he cheated on you because he had a very, very bad inclination, and he cheated on you, but that doesn't mean you're not pretty enough, you're not good enough, etc. I'm angry at God because my, my, my uh, boyfriend cheated on me. What does heaven have to do with that? I mean, what does that have to do with heaven? It has nothing to do with heaven. You have to, this is why you need more spiritual packages than stimulus packages. If we just go for the stimulus package, the Obama stimulus package or the PPE loan, 
at the end of the day, what, what, do, you, what do you have today? Inflation. <laughs> what do you have? Did we not pay for the? Did you not pay for the money? You sure did. Spiritual package means you want a guy with self-control. You want a guy that appreciates people. You want a guy that appreciates himself. How he treats himself, how he treats others. Because that's how he'll treat you. But the worst thing is, is to get stuck and thinking this is going to repeat over and over again because of one bad apple, one situation. You guys have to heal. And, and therapy is not enough. You need a Muna. Therapy will tell you it's not about you. It's an issue you had with your childhood, blah, 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 blah. But you still need to elevate that to a better, to wisdom. Otherwise, we're just replaying these stories and we put all our guards up for the next guy and the next guy has to be punished because of what the other guy did. How many times has the new guy been punished for what the other guy did? Yes or no? Yes. Admit it. I'm just telling you to ch what to change. I'm just telling you what to change. How many times do you get screamed at the DNV for something you didn't do? You ask for my passport to, or, or my license to get renewed, and it's the ladies, you know, got chicken fingers on you, screaming at you, go back in the line. Says, what does that have to do with me? It's your problem. But we, 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 we know it's not us. We know that's the way they are at the DNV. Just giving you an example. The whole point of all this, the whole point of all this is not to take everything so personal and stay stuck in trauma. Because what that's going to do to you, it's going to, it's going to not allow the new hellos to come in your life. Because you haven't said goodbye. I could tell by the energy level sometimes of the stuckness. I could tell the energy level that there's You could tell your energy level. You, not everybody, I'm just saying. But when you show up to date with no, with no enthusiasm, you could, you've already judged, predicted, sabotaged, finished. Why? At least go with an open mindset. At least go with an open mindset, at least go with humility, because that person could introduce you to somebody else. But when you go, not for me, judgmental, not, it's, it's, you're hurting yourself. There's cases where there was, a, there was a, the very religious couple, a guy couldn't get married for years, and, and he, he hired every single matchmaker in the world. And, and, and next thing you know, the nanny tells him, by the way, I used to work in another house, and there's a really nice guy for you. Nanny, I, I, I spent 30 grand in matchmakers. What's the nanny going to do? The nanny set them up, by the way. We think, oh, he spent the $30,000 in the matchmakers. How could a nanny set it up? It's because God's trying to show you you know nothing. God is trying to explain to you you know nothing. And he's going to remind you how much you know nothing. And when you understand that, then you can open doors that you thought were bad and those doors are like, maybe it's good. But I shouldn't call everything bad. That's something we have to work on. There's no other way to work on this than prayer. Prayer allows you, because remember, the way it works in spirituality is everything begins spiritual and it manifests physical. Everything begins spiritual and it manifests physical physical. For example, let's say I start praying just to, to, to love myself more. Okay? Let's say I am having a hard time in relationships. So there's a good chance that I'm taking everything too personal. Right? Because at the end of the day, people are going to say what they're going to say. I actually have to pray for that. Why am I so offended? Why am I so hurt every single time somebody says something to me? Why am I so scared when people don't respond to texts? What kind of, what, 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 why am I sending this desperate vibes? Why am I, my, 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 why am I subconsciously so nervous even though nothing really happened? That's because there's stuff inside of you that has not been processed. Your nervous system tells you everything. The way you breathe, you open up a text. The person says something else, you, you start palpitating. It's, it's in your nervous system. It's in your nervous system. And you need to talk it out to your creator. You need to talk it out to your creator. Because when you, when you live with that mindset, you're always going to think of the worst case scenario. And then usually that will happen. 
So we have a lot of work. People tell me, I have no time for prayer, I have no time for his bodhidut, I have no time. But otherwise, I mean, isn't it frustrating to go through these same relationships over and over again? Isn't it? Do you agree or no? I sometimes say, again? Why are you not listening to me? I have some people I coach. I go rocking on them. I said, I, why are you not listening to me? What, how long are you? I don't care what's out there. I care what's in here. Because I've told you, the, the, your inner game will reflect the outer game. So if I work on building trust in myself, okay? If I build, work on building trust in myself, getting out of any kind of uh, trauma that happened to me, that I took it personal, and I stayed in the past. If I really, really work on that self, I'm going to feel energized and, and go into action. You understand? Because what happens when you have trust in your life? What's the opposite of an insecurity? Trust, correct? When you have trust, you're excited to go into the process. When you're insecure, you're almost waiting for something to go bad. So your focus is on pretty much what's, gonna, what, what's not going to be good. And that is the problem. So we can't change these patterns until you have a daily ritual in the morning to reprogram your mind, such as manifesting. Because think about it, if I'm manifesting, how can I be insecure? Not possible. You can't tell me I'm lazy when I'm working out, because I'm taking action, right? I don't have thoughts of laziness when I'm working out, because I'm taking action. So when I'm working on redeeming my imagination, I'm not thinking about insecurities. I'm clearing the way through these insecurities. You understand? I'm, it's showing me that I'm practicing believing that I deserve to, be, to have a good, happy marriage and to have healthy relationships, and I deserve to be happy. So when you're doing the work, it's in line with your actions. But when you just study and no action, it shows you don't really believe in the change. That make sense? Without the action, action is the best way to cut negativity in your head. For example, let's say I'm a big thinker. I think, think, think. Instead of thinking, which is rooted with an I, self-centeredness, I start thanking. Right? Thanking is connected to the Almighty. A, hey, Almighty. So just thinking prevents me from thinking. So it's extremely important that Elu is about taking action. That means you have to be able to take some kind of action with what your future self looks like. This is another reason why. Why don't we physically, if we, on Rosh Hashanah, we take the apple and the honey and the, and the, and the spinach and the, and the beans and all that stuff. We don't just say a prayer, correct? Very rarely do you have a pre-game prayer with food itself. You know why? Because what would happen? People would say the prayer. They'd be in space cadets. But when you're eating the food, eating the food connects you to the item. You're taking a physical action now. The prayer, I'm going to have a sweet honey. Take the apple, you eat the apple. You're imagining having, because now you, you took action from the physicality. The physicality now became, the spirituality now became physicality. You understand? It, you physically took action to do it. So this is why, otherwise you would just have prayers. But they want us to get in our, get into, get the mind and then take action right away to internalize this thing. I've yet to meet a person that has gotten married, that has gone, has been single and. And again, I have tons of tons of research. It's not like I'm coming here from nowhere. Baruch Hashem, thank God, I have a very good following. These people were not interested. These people were committed. That was a big difference. When they got married, when they, got, they found the persons, they were committed. It was not an interested thing. It wasn't an interested. They went through highs and lows, ups and downs, but they got it at the end of the day. And no matter what age, from 63 to 70 to 45 to 55, it doesn't matter the age. You have to be committed, not interested. 
Interested doesn't get you nothing. Committed gets you everything. That means instead of saying, I'll do, what it I'll do my best, you have to say, I'm going to do what it takes. If I need to sit there and every 30 days I have to wake up early and work on my imagination and just manifesting me being happy, me being fulfilled in a relationship, me being worry-free, that work that you do is going to show up everywhere. The date, it's going to show up. It's going to show up everywhere. But when you show worry, what does fear do? It makes you scared and stupid. It makes you scared and stupid. Because you can't think of the solution, and you're too busy being scared. And God forbid we show up to Rosh Hashanah with this, with this energy when, when matches are made. <laughs> when matches are made. Can you imagine that? What a horror film that it would be. Because all your creator wants you to do is believe in yourself. It seems so simple, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem so simple? It's not so simple. Because of the trauma, because of the relationships, you have not let these relationships go. You have to let these relationships go. You have to let them go. Remember, and that is your, that is your evil inclination. As women, that is your evil inclination to forgive and let go. They're connected to the malchuts, which is more connected to struggling with honor. So when they don't get honor, they automatically take it personal. And guess what? There's a lot of crazy people out there. Imagine if I walked around and took everything personal. I would be out of business. I would be out of business. I'd be in my facility <laughs> having panic attacks for approval. I can't believe what this guy said to me. I can't believe he didn't like my class. I can't. Can you imagine that? I would, be, I would be anxious and depressed. If I took people things personal, I would be anxious and depressed right now. Hmm. I'm trying to teach you something. Don't make everything about you. People are going through their own world. Imagine, think about this concept, which is so deep. Think about how hard it is to change ourselves. Imagine how hard it is to change others. So any attempt to change another person, when you already know how hard it is to change yourself, you don't even attempt it. You don't even attempt it. You have to give that person space, see their good point. To change them, it's not going to happen. This is why Rabbi Rush, every time I have a situation, I call Rabbi Rush, who's one of my mentors, and he says, did you read the Garden of Peace? Yes, Rabbi. Did you pray for it? Not so much, Rabbi. Go, go pray for it. It's not a knowledge thing. It's just I'm not... The evil inclination gets to you. It makes you scared. It makes you stupid. It makes you go into a bath. You know, it makes you sluggish. And then you have to get up again and work on it. You have to work again, work and work and work again. So Elul, El, this month of Elul, we are getting that inspiration. We are getting that, that thought. But then we now have to go and put the work in. We have to now put the work in. It's not going to come. It's gonna, the work has to be put in by you guys. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. You are the solution and you are the problem. You are the solution and you are the problem. When you understand that, and, and the problem is your shadow is a shadow, because we don't emphasize personal prayer. It's not talked about. Even if you read psychology books, they'll tell you, but it's, it's not enough. You still have to pray for it. Your creator wants your prayer. If you have any character defects, you, you created the world, you gave me this character defect, and you are the one that can take it away from me. And then once you do this deep work, then you'll be open-minded. The dates and the people you meet will be a whole different ballgame. Because if I'm, over, I'm able to be trust and confident, I can give you space, you'll give me space, and then we both give each other space, there's a good chance of the relationship working out. But when I'm not doing this work, I'm not giving you space. I'm trying to change you and control you. I'm trying to suffocate you. And then I'm, I'm, I'm upset that you're not listening to me. So you have suffocation, control, and then you're trying to change me. 
how do you work, expect that to work out? Explain to me. So just think logically. Explain to me. So this is the problem why emuna, why faith is such a big deal. Because without faith, we can't get to second base. We can't get, we can't, we're going to just all day long stuck, we're stuck, we're stuck in the past. And of course, if you're scared and you're not going to manifest. It's, it's just a vicious cycle of, of nothingness. Do you understand? And then years go by, people get different, our expectations get higher, and our results get lower, and life just becomes the way it is. So we have to do something on a daily, daily basis to now, specifically the mornings, to start reprogramming, praying, to work on these character flaws, which is, a lot of this is insecurity. Insecurity really is arrogance, you understand? It's not humility. Arrogance is controlling another person. Humility means I am going to understand you, I'm not going to judge you. A humble person doesn't judge. A humble person understands why this person is acting this way. Maybe they had a bad day. Maybe they're going through something. They don't always think, it's me, 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 me. They're not nice to me. They get a comment to me. I'm just giving, giving you a, a recipe for the whole long run, not just for the short run dates. Does, that, does everybody understand this concept? So when you already told me you're not manifesting, I had, to, I had to pretty much rip the speech. I had to rip the speech, which normally usually happens. But it's not, what, what, what are we going to talk about? Who cares who you're meeting? It's not going to work out if I don't have that open heart. Do you understand? This is why religion without a heart. What, what is heart? Without a heart, it's just tradition. It's not, it's not anything. It's not anything. It's not anything. So doing his bodhidut, which is talking to God every single day, I do with music, and I speak to him about my, my issues in my relationship. My, as a Scorpio, my, it could be my taking things personal, my uh, controlling things. And I have to work on those character defects because if, if I don't work on them, they now show up in my relationship over and over. And, that, and that's what's causing the marital problems. It's not the, the spouse. It's why am I so, why, where, why, why am I so demanding? Why am I, why am I so off today? It's not the spouse. That means I didn't put work on it. I got lazy. And that's what happened. And specifically, the man has to do the majority of the work. But the women, they have to, they have, they're more spiritual than men, and they need to use the power of speech. Imagine if I asked you today, there's 1,440 minutes in a day. Imagine if you dedicated, let's say, 20 minutes a day to asking God to get rid of your insecurities versus reading Instagrams on insecurities. What would your results be? What would your results be? Completely different. Your energy would be different. Did you ever forgive somebody and felt, and felt better? Did anybody ever forgive somebody and felt better automatically? Yes or no? Yes, no? Yes. yes. Why? Because you, you became a giver. You became humble and you became less self-centered. You let go of your own insecurities. You let it go. You didn't make it about you. Forgiveness, and guess what happens? When you forgave them, your creator now forgave you. <laughs> it's just a beautiful cycle where we can get to this. Imagine waking up in the morning and appreciating my spouse. You know the, the energy I'm sending them? I'm sending them positive energy. Or my partner, or my zivug, I'm just sending them positive energy. Anytime you pray for somebody, it's like giving charity to them. Imagine the energy you're sending them. Imagine the energy you're sending them when you're resenting them. We know that works, which is called passive aggressiveness. Yes or no? So we know it works, right? So where, are we, where, where is the energy going? And what's happening? What's happening? So when you know what Rosh Hashanah is, when I'm telling you I even go to Moldova, to, to Ukraine, because I want to be, my mind has to be sharp. I have a whole year of classes, I have growth. My mind cannot even have a hint of any stupidity, worry, or anything that I want. I want to be laser-focused exactly where I want to go. 
And, and that's what usually allows me to hit the goals. It's the persistence, but it's also the constant work. And, not, and trying to, most importantly, not blame the dating scene, the partners. When you're blaming the world, it's arrogance. Because that means I don't need to take responsibility. I don't need to take responsibility. I made an excuse, so I feel good about myself. I'm just trying to explain to you. All of this is a form of arrogance. It's not, a, it's not humility. Because our, our sages tell us that a person who's humble, his prayers are heard. His prayers are heard. And now that you're programmed to think this way, then marriage becomes much, much easier. You created space. Trust, you created space. You started giving the benefit of the doubt. You, 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 you went against your nature by, by finding good, by getting rid of, by forgiving people. And what do you think is going to show up? God shows up to your marriage. And when God shows up, blessings show up. Kids, good energy, healing, peace. All of this shows up, all what we want. What do you think all of the results of all this? Fulfillment, peace, giving, etc. But when it's all about you, you know what shows up? More things I'm not worth getting. More things I'm not getting. This is why laziness is a lack of faith. And jealousy is blocked inspiration. Anytime we're jealous of somebody, it's really telling me I should be inspired by them but my inspiration is blocked. And jealousy is so bad that you don't even get what you seek. <laughs> you lose what you have on a conscious level. Remember, we barely said a word of Torah. This is all energy, but it's all Torah. <laughs> what I'm talking about here is all Torah, Hasidis, it's just using different language to explain to you in a very practical way. Way. But this is all coming from 1800 teach year teachings. The Baal Shem Tov, which is projection. What do you think? Projection was a sign. <laughs> it came from the Baal Shem Tov, 1800s. 1600s. Reb Nachman, he spoke about finding the good points in yourself, finding the good points in others. Reb Nachman spoke about being in the... All of this that you hear today, it's all been talked about centuries already ago. Love languages, all of this stuff is all in the Torah, believe it or not. When you understand somebody's love language, you're, it's connect, you're connected to the energy of Hod. The energy of Hod is, is, represents your ability to listen, to understand them, to understand what makes them happy. Because remember, what is the whole point of me understanding you? If I understand you, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You understand? If I give you the benefit of the doubt, I'm not judging you. I can't love you if I'm judging you, correct? Can you love somebody you're judging? No, because judgment blocks love. So all of this is all energy. All we're talking about tonight is all energy. Clearing out on Rosh Hashanah also. Clearing out our relationship with our Creator, because remember, our relationship with our Creator very much mirrors our relationship with money and relationships. Yes or no? Have you honestly said to yourself, I'm mad at my creator for, this, for what he did to me with this relationship. Right? You've had some resentment a little bit? No? Why aren't you helping me out? Yes, questions? Right? Why are you not helping me out? Why are you putting me through this? Correct? Or did we, or did we get swallowed by the, the whale and ask for the Wi-Fi password? That means the danger that we're going through is to get you motivated. It's to get you to wake up. It's not to get you to drown you out. So that's why I really want to, you guys to, to, try to try to set a specific time. It's either in the morning or at night where you are completely, completely away from everybody. You pinpoint the areas of your life that you feel are blockages. And once you get rid of the blockages, the light comes. Just like once I get rid of the questions, the answers come, correct? And that's what fear does. It creates questions, it creates blockages. But again, this has to be done. 
consistently, every morning or every night, specific time where you work on manifestation, you ask your creator to help you remove these character defects, you ask your creator if you're, not, if you're seeing negativity in your, in your partner, why am I seeing that ugliness in him? If I'm seeing it, that means I have a little bit of it. Show me, Creator, how I can release it. All of this negativity, what we're seeing, is not to go vent like a yenta on Instagram. That's not the purpose of it. <laughs> it's the purpose is to see what, why is my Creator showing me this? That means you're better off with a girl that's going to mention you in her prayers than her Instagram stories. Do you understand? That's probably more important. And this is hard work, by the way. But this is all, therapy gets you to the issue. And then you have to work through his bodhidut, personal prayer, meditation, to now get yourself out of that exile. That is what Elul is about. Redeeming the subconscious. It's all in the subconscious. I hate to tell you. So if I told you right now, why are you not, why are you not open for a new relationship? It's because there's a blockage there. And that blockage is from not handling something with faith. Because if you handle it with faith, you let it go. That make sense? When you handle something with faith, what is the reward for faith? Joy. Joy. The reward for faith is joy. You would have joy. You would have joy. You wouldn't seek revenge. That is the single most important you have to work on. And then once you have emuna. You just get into a beautiful, you, you, you see the whole world through Emuna. You see the, I was very lucky, to be honest. I was very lucky that when I was 22, 23 years old, I learned Rabbi Nachman's teachings for 14 years straight, without public speaking, without all this. Because if I would have started the public speaking, I would have been too distracted and all that. But the fact that I learned it for so much and I went so deep into it, and once you have these things, it's part of you. There's nothing to talk about. It's not a question of what happened in my relationship. It's what time do I have to pray for this situation in the relationship? What time do I pray? You're already scheduling the appointment. You're scheduling already that this is, this is it's something you're manifesting. Because manifestation is beautiful. God is showing you what's, whole, what's in your subconscious. And you get in life what you practice. So if I'm thinking, if my whole day is, is, is more worried than manifesting, if I can't even get my mind to that space, that means that's what I'm practicing. And you get in life with your practice. Get in life with your practice. That should be your main focus in Rosh Hashanah, purifying your mind. But most important, really, really getting yourself, setting, and making a decision to say, even before you go to synagogue, let's say, you know what, let me go to synagogue half an hour late, an hour late. Let me spend some time by myself just manifesting the kind of day, I, I, the kind of year I want to have. You know, it's a lost art, by the way. It's a lost art. Everything became a lost art. What do you think the purpose of the shofar is? It's to break the crookedness of the heart. What do you think the, pro the shofar is? The shofar is the, the biggest anti-trauma that there is. <laughs> shofar breaks the crookedness. Because when we go through trauma, we start developing very different ideas that are not so in line with faith. Yes or no? It's honest. It's, it's the truth. It's the truth. Believe me, I've gone through my traumas. But the first reaction is not usually the best one. It's not the best one. Then you have to work through it. But through faith, God will give you the reason why you went through it. You understand? In the spiritual world, first you have to have faith, then the knowledge comes to you. It's called emuna and then yedida. Emuna first, faith first, and then you will understand the thing rationally. The opposite of the world is I need to understand it, and when I understand it, I'll have faith. What's the opposite? The jealousy, the Instagrams, the comparisons, the low self esteem, the anxiety, the depression. And that's what the norm is. You, you, you see the, the flip of this or no? But if you do, know deep down, women were responsible for the redemption in Egypt. They were responsible for it. That means once you see it, 
it will come. Imagine if I told you you got to practice something until you see it, and then once you see it, you don't have to do anything. It will come to you. It will come to you. That's the work. Or there's another way. There's another way to get through the speed line in life. Is when you handle failure well. Failure well. If you handle a bad relationship well, and you thank God for, for it from your heart, and you believe it's for the best, that will also bring you a, 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 a segula, a miracle, immediately. So one is manifesting, another one is handling a situation completely against the norm of that you would have. Thanking him for, the, for a breakup, thanking him for a very bad situation, but really believing it was for the best. That is like asking, that basically brings on brand new opportunities. Thanking God in advance for the situation, believing it's 100% for the best. That also brings, opens up doors. The third thing that could do this magical thing is to live a life where you are the most merciful, forgiving, letting go kind of person. Then you also don't have to manifest. Things just come to you. So there's definitely tricks in heaven that you can use to get through, to get through the norm of dating and reality. And again, I have experience doing it. <laughs> I have experience. I throw cheesecake parties, whatever I, what, that's my thing. But I throw, I'll definitely have an event, and then I'll definitely throw a celebration when that event happens. And that, that is faith. That is faith. It's faith in yourself and faith in your creator. It's a double win. It's a double win, do you understand? It's a double win. Everybody wants you to win. It gets to a point where you, you can get to a point, place where you feel so abundant and so joyful that you will be hijacked in your prayers. <laughs> and you will be praying for things and you will be seeing things that you wouldn't even imagine without throwing up. Spiritual philosophy. All that, all that is called bittel in, in Kabbalah. It's called nullification. Nullification of the ego. When you nullify yourself and you just let go, it all comes to you. It all comes to you. You don't have to even chase it. You barely have to go to events also. Save money on the dates and this, all that. You don't have to save money on all the BS. It'll just come to you. My wife came straight to my house. I had a Shabbat dinner and came straight to my house. Didn't even leave my house. <laughs> Did not even leave my house. Do you understand? Did not even leave my house. They're not even my house. I know, I know the rules. I know, I, know, I know the rules in heaven. But you have to get to that confidence where you can get that and you have to let go of all this. And it's doing nothing for you anyway right now. What is it doing for you, by the way? <laughs> just honestly. Why can't you just let go? What is it doing for you? Think about it. What is it doing for you? Is it protecting you? What is it doing for you? Are you afraid to get hurt? What is it doing for you? you ask yourself, what is it doing for me? It's a prison. It's a prison. It's nothing else. Something you need to ask. What is this doing for me? There's blockages. And then when you're in that stage, you might meet a person that says, you know what? I, I, you know what? I think Shabbat would be good for you. And you have to be open to these things. You just have to be open. Open to things. You can't shut down things. Things are going to come that you're not going to expect. Maybe a person with kids you wouldn't expect. Because remember, when you're in that manifestation, it comes, the package comes. It's not a guy in a horse with the armor. It's reality. And then you have to be open. Open to that. Any questions on this? What I'm talking to you about is called his bodhidut. It has to be practiced every single morning or at night. A time where you can really, really disconnect. Disconnect and speak to your creator at length about this. And the purpose of my classes is, is to get you inspired, but then you need to take action. And your action will get you more inspiration, which will lead to more action, and which will lead you into inspiration. You understand? You came here to be inspired. Now you have to take action. And your action will make you get inspired. I can give you a thousand sources for this. I have, a, I have 
tons of people that have gotten uh, that have gotten married, tons, tons. And, but they, they 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 have to do the work. Which and the way by the way, once you do this with this, you could do this with business. You could do this with anything. It's any it's all in the Torah. This is not a a, 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 this is a, this is a, it's called faith. Faith is the source of all blessing. That is what it's called. Faith. Faith is the source of all blessing. Do we understand that or no? Faith is the source of all blessing. Faith is the ability to see greater than your circumstances. Faith is the ability to see everything for the best. Faith is the ability to let go and not seek to understand. Faith is the ability to believe that whatever you're doing is going to work without watching the scoreboard. This is all under the umbrella of faith. And once you have that connection, you'll, you'll never stop. And then your life will just magically change. So this is why it's going to be very uncomfortable. Remember, we shouldn't be upset when we try this and all of a sudden, all the worry comes, and oh, it's not going to work, I'm, it's uncomfortable. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. Because remember, we're trying to break walls here. Do you not agree that we build walls when things happen? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do we, have, we built, have we built walls, yes or no? Yes. Is, is that a coping mechanism, yes or no? Correct? We didn't build a bridge, right? We built a wall, correct? Yes, no? Yes, OK. And then we built another wall, correct? You guys should have helped Trump. <laughs> so the more walls that you have, right, is, don't you agree that those walls prevent you from getting awareness of who's good for you? Yes? So don't you agree that the walls have to come down? So how do you practically remove those walls? The same way you made them. Go into discomfort. How did you make the wall? You, saw, you use it for comfort. How do you break it? You use it, you, go, you become uncomfortable. For example, try, everybody has the, the posture today to look like they're walking like a hunchback. Everybody's pot with the phone, right? Everybody's posture looks like it's, they're ready to go on the floor. <laughs> now try sitting up straight with your glutes out and your shoulders out. Try doing that for 24 hours and see what I'm going to do. You understand? How, do you know how long it's going to take you to sit straight? Try not crossing your legs for a while. Do you know how long it's going to take you not to be able to cross your legs? Because crossing your legs, you're overcompensating for other areas. You understand? When you're leaning on a wall, when you're talking, you're leaning on a wall. What are you leaning on a wall? You're 70 years old? What are you leaning on a wall for? You can't stand up straight. It's a custom of lazy. Do you understand? So now, when you don't lean on the wall, what do you think it's going to be? It's going to be very uncomfortable. Right? It's going to be very uncomfortable. So what are you going to do? You're going to lean on the wall? You're going to need a, a new hips? <laughs> you have to stand up straight. But you use leaning on the wall for laziness. So we use walls to, for, to, to come up with an excuse. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready. Uh, I need to heal. Okay. With, what are you healing with? With Emunah? OK, I'll give you time to heal. What are you healing with? With what? What are you healing with? That's my problem. When people tell me, I need more time. With what? With more worry? What, what, what do you need more time for? But what exactly? What are you using it for? That's my only problem. The wrong, because perspective drives performance. Your perspective will drive your performance. And, your, and according to your theory, your therapy is your, your theory is your therapy. Remember, every bounce back in life, every fa fall, failure, is not for you to get back to the same level as before. It's to get back to a much higher level. The purpose of the bounce back is never to go back to the same spot. Otherwise, what do you need to bounce back for? The purpose of the bounce back is to go to a higher level. We think, well, if I failed in this level, how can I even go higher? Again, that is your own mindset. This is all your own programming. It's not reality. It's not reality. 
the contraction is to allow more light in. It's not to, I need a contraction. The fight in the relationship is to allow a new love to come. It's not, for example, the purpose of Nida is not to separate in order to create avoidance and, and create resentment. It's to create a new spark. So you have to withdraw in order to re-engage with a new spark. It's never to engage in the same area as before. But I'm going to be honest with you. All of this, you have to take it down to your heart. It, it, it involves prayer. Today, even the Gemara, which is very religious people read the Gemara. It says prayer is at the summit of the universe, but most people take it lightly. And there, and there are people that read this. So we, we're, and the job of, of the, the common job today is the distractions we have. We have a lot of distractions. We're very distracted. We have 1,440 minutes. We have time to do it, but we're busy. Busy what? I'm, busy. I'm not in the mood. That's a distraction. So remember, just like the, a guy hitting on a wall, he, can't, he doesn't want to stand up straight, he has to stand up straight. He created that problem. We don't, we're not born hitting, standing on walls. We're not leaning on walls. We're not born crossing, hand, crossing our feet. It's, we develop these patterns, and now they have to go break these patterns. It took me almost a year for me to work on my glutes and my shoulders to break patterns of my phone. A year of working out, etc., just to break the pattern. And then once the pattern went away, oh, no more shoulder pain. Oh, no more back pain. Wow. It had nothing to do with the shoulder back pain. It had to do with the posture. So if the posture is like this, of course you're going to have thoughts. Just understand this example. Once you stand up straight, everything else will work out itself. The purpose of the back pain and the shoulder pain were only as a result of bad posture. So don't think that you have to fix each one individually. No, you just have to fix the core of the issue is not being insecure and believing in yourself, believing in your creator. Then the rest is history. Everything else works out by itself. That's why it says faith is the source of all blessings, not just one. Because when you're living with faith, you see everything is good. And good is godly. And your focus is only to see the good. And once you see the good, everything just illuminates in, in our lives and everything. And that's why Rosh Hashanah, you have, you have to get there, stand up straight, and have this holy confidence. See, sometimes people mistake confidence as arrogance. No. Confidence means I don't have to compare myself, but I know who I am. I know the work I put in, and I know I can believe I'm going to have a good year. That's confidence. Low confidence, I have to compare myself to this guy, that guy. Confidence means I put the work in, I'm going to have a good year. Period. And you know what? Your creator will give it to you because you have that confidence. He'll give you, that, he'll give you the good year. Because you have that, you worked on yourself, he'll give it to you. He wants to give it to you. So all of this stuff is, is, is just, all of this fear, the depression, anxiety, despair, it's got no room for it. I'll tell you why. Because our creator of the world said that after, after the destruction of the world, of the flood, there will never be another destruction again. So what that practically means, any destruction that you had, any bad relationship, any trauma, that spark can always be reignited to create a new reality. You just have to believe in it. May Hashem help you and bless all of you that we should all get in the right mindset.